This episode of the Inside Running Podcast is brought to you by Pillar Performance, Australia's first micronutrition brand, providing high-strength formulations to support optimal performance and recovery for endurance athletes. Available now at pillarperformance.com.au. Welcome to episode number 216 of the Inside Running Podcast. Thank you for joining us for another week. Uh, uh, Not so much of a big show coming at you this week. Not much happens this close to Christmas, but thanks for giving us a bit of your attention and uh, putting us in your ears to listen to us talk about some running stuff for the next hour or so. Uh, Usual segments coming at you. We're also going to be calling one of the new panel members of our new side project that's coming to Patreon in a couple of weeks. You spoke to, uh, we heard from Jess Stenson last week, and we'll hear from a new one this week. And yeah, all the other segments that happen on this show each week. Moose did just tell me off air that he wants a triple this week. Moose on the loose, purchase of the week, and rules for Strava. So one big segment coming there the week before Christmas, which should be pretty special. Welcome my co-host up in Canberra, Brad Croker. How are you? Good, thanks, Brady. Do you remember uh, what we're doing this time two years ago? It was a Steigen hashtag one. Well, today was the day that I arrived at your place and we were sinking a few beers by the pool, Ooh, um, which which means that tomorrow is the uh, two-year anniversary of Steigen hashtag one, which uh, always brings back fond memories and would be up there with one of the best athletic events that I've been involved in ever. It was so much fun and I really hope Steigen do something similar next year. Yeah, I was asking Moose during the week about, like, has there been any talk about Steigen, like the 10K or the hashtag one, but not much happening. But, yeah, you're right. It was um, it was, it was unique for different reasons. And I guess for you, like, that's – you're talking about a guy that doesn't travel for any races for himself, but he travelled halfway across the country coming down to watch the Inside Runner podcast team. I do remember – you should say the pool at the moment, correct, because it's in mint condition. That was a good afternoon, sinking beers in there. Yeah, it was good fun. And um, do you remember remember at Steigen, Moose hiding in the corner all night? Yeah, yeah. And now he's going on to coach an Olympian. I was just Man, literally was... watching him on YouTube today. He was doing this coaching presentation with Dathan Ritten on. And I'm like, shit, this guy's got some good answers for a guy who was scared of coaching two years ago. Did, did Moose actually talk to any of our team members that night? No, no, no. no. All those guys are still waiting for him to introduce himself. I was, I was actually selling all the merchandise. You blokes were off there getting photos. With, but with your with each other mainly. No, no, no one's that. <laughs> You're just taking selfies together. And I was doing the work, setting the table up, selling the gear. Um, yeah. Actually, there is a good photo of uh, myself and uh, Louis. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that is a good photo. Is that yeah. the one where you're real serious, like giving him coaching instructions? Yeah, Pat, I'm shaking his hand and patting him on the back. That's right. How much coaching you reckon you're doing to? Five people that you barely even talked to before. When their race starts, ten minutes after, <laughs> it's, it's it's revving them up. It's getting them to believe in themselves, and it's getting them to rinse themselves for the team moose. That's what it's okay. about. You're that inspirational, eh? Well, no, <laughs> but it still helps. I reckon if you got someone there that you know supporting you. 
Sure. I don't know before, one of the races croaks, maybe it was a 800 or whatever it was, the second last one, and we're like, boys, it's going to be slow. I reckon you two guys just go to the front. <laughs> and then the gun goes, and like all these like Jordan Williams and Sam Mack, and then that just fang it, and our guys are just like spat straight out the back. Like, they, sorry, um, sorry, boys, bad bad tactics there. They did rinse themselves, though. It was pretty pretty fun to watch. A few of those singlets going around uh, Melbourne Marathon last week, the old Steigen hashtag ones, limited editions. <laughs> Some from the other teams get around? Nah, nah. That's Maybe. pretty cool. Yeah, different what you on course. Did you see any from the other teams? Yeah, no. I saw a couple. Did, oh, you? did you? I haven't seen any, no. Jeez. I saw Mitch Thompson had one on. Did he, really? But I guess the difference was we sold a few extras, whereas I'm not sure the other teams, like businesses, bought extra and sold them. Yeah, true. Right. Yeah. My other co-host, join us from Ballarat this week. It's been a while since I said that. Julian Spence, welcome to this week's show. Thanks, mate. Yeah, Monday evenings are normally day off time. Day off time except for this hour and a half of dread of my life. <laughs> <laughs> you know what he's down there doing, Croaks, just getting in on the Christmas commercial kind of time of the year, slinging some shoes, Goodbye. some gift vouchers, okay. some, uh, just, some hats. You want a new run and watch? This is the time to buy one off Moose. He's just pissed off he didn't uh, didn't mention his marathon PB at the int- on the intro this week. Oh, actually, you'll love this story, Moose. I was practicing my introduction before, and I said to Carly, it's episode 216, and she goes, oh, yeah, that's like Moose's marathon PB, so just put those two together. And I'm like, <laughs> ah, he's actually run 214. So, uh, yeah, you got to do something right, like real coming up soon so people refresh their memories about your marathon PB. You missed the opportunity two episodes ago. Mm. Yeah, I know. I thought that. But then next episode, Croaks, you can start the intro because you'll be hosting next week with your own PB. 217 Man on episode number 217. Probably won't be doing that. I can do <laughs> it. It'll be the Brad Croker Love Fest show. No, we'll have a, <laughs> uh, Hi, Brad. We'll, have, we'll have a high-profile guest or host co-host next week. Yeah, but he can't host. He's too big no, of a no, star to host. He'll have to host it. That, that's what the intro will be about. Yeah, true. Yeah, that will be a big, big person filling yeah. the shoes next week. I miss that chat. Oh, yeah, I think you mm. were sorting your dinner while we said who that was. We'll fill you in. Well, Moose, we can give it away. It's the other guest of the new show who we're not calling tonight. Ah, uh, who are we calling tonight then? Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you also miss that. You'll hear, you'll hear the, that the about... king of The king of his state. Yeah, I think that's the one that I think that's who, uh, or how Brady refers to him as King of the North, the guy who doesn't have the Commonwealth medals. Okay, okay, I gotcha. All right, so we'll hear from them later off the rails early on in this show, but let's get things started. Bradley Croker, still off Strava, tell us what's been happening in your running life. Uh, yeah, not a lot happening on Strava, um, at the moment. So I ran, oh, sorry, I didn't run, I went for a bike ride on the, when was it? On Monday, um, just did like an hour or something. Uh, and then I got to Tuesday and I thought, oh, calf's feeling feeling all right, I'll, um, I'll give it a go. So jumped up and I thought, oh, well, I'll just jump on the treadmill because that's probably the, um, you know, obviously if, if something doesn't feel right, I can just stop rather than being stuck um, in the middle of Mulligan. So jumped on. Um, Felt pretty good. Like my calf was probably like a one out of ten. Like you know, just like could hardly hardly feel it. Um, had one of the sweat elite videos on on YouTube on the um on the console playing. So end up doing like eight, just over eight k, um, forty minutes. Like so, four forty eight uh, on the treadmill and got off. I thought like I could have kept going, but I thought oh that's that's enough for my first run back. Um, Got off, felt really good the rest of the day. I went out to the track that night to um, just watch the athletes that I coached because I obviously wasn't doing a track session. Um, and I was chatting to Rory Hunter, and I'm like, oh, I think I think I've turned the corner. Like I was hopping, and there was no pain whatsoever. So then that was so then on uh, Wednesday, I thought, oh, I'll just do something something similar. So I jumped on the treadmill, and I got like 10 minutes in, and it just started to like tighten up. So I stopped, and then it was like a little bit tender. So that was the end of my my running for the week. Um, so because I only ran for ten minutes, I'm like, well, that's not really enough for the day. So I then drove to the um, to the gym, rode for another hour, um, and all my rides have just been like heart rate sort of averaging about one thirty odd, one thirty to one thirty five. So nothing, yeah, no sort of interval session, just you know nice and aerobic um and then we had went out to viv's parents place for their sort of family christmas that afternoon and evening 
Uh, then I took Thursday off. Um, so the days that I don't ride, I generally just do some like um, glute activation stuff at home and some core. So then Friday went and did 70 minutes. Uh, heart rate was a bit higher, 140 odd. And then took Saturday off. And then Sunday um, back to the gym, rode for 90 minutes, 137 heart rate. So yeah, basically 10, 10K of running and uh, what, about four hours or so on the bike for the week. So it's the calf's definitely starting to feel like pretty good, um, but I just don't want to get into this cycle of um, you know coming back too soon, running one day and then it's sort of just flaring up. And like you know if it's flaring when I'm running like four thirty, four forties, it's obviously not not ready to go. So my plan is to try and run um, at some point this week. So we're heading to the coast tomorrow for like three days so hopefully i can get at least one run in while i'm down there yeah so, this is uh, a legit injury isn't it uh yeah i don't like yeah like well, it's, it's bizarre in that i didn't actually feel it, ha- it happened because like i did a session on the tuesday and then when i was at work on the wednesday i'm like oh my calf's a bit sort of tight but i was able to run on the wednesday and the thursday and then it was when i did uh a bit of a tempo on the treadmill on the friday that it started to to flare up and as i said last week it's it's the the same feeling that i got when i hurt my calf in melbourne just that sort of tightening up and like you can run through it and i think i i I missed about two and a half weeks uh or maybe two and a half to three after melbourne half but i came back like i I tried out a couple of times um and it, it definitely wasn't as bad this time around as it was at melbourne so um yeah like I'm not too stressed at all about it. Like I, um, you know, I miss not like I miss not being able to go for a run, but I'm not stressed about like losing fitness or whatever. I just want to get back to being able to go out for a run. Yeah, good time of the year though to have a few weeks off, festive yeah. time, have a few beers, go to yeah. a few Christmas parties, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I just hope it's like I'd like it to be right by the start of the year. So um, you actually yeah. seem in pretty good spirits for a guy who's got a bit of a niggle. Yeah, well, it's. I reckon it's completely different. Like, I wish I had this mindset when I was actually serious because when you're, I guess, serious and training for something, well, you're always sort of training for something generally. Um, when you get an injury, like, you think it's the end of the world and it's like, oh, well, there goes that event. You know, it's going to take me now, you know, three months to get fit again. But when you don't really care about racing, it's, you know, yeah, it sucks being injured, but I don't know, like, I'm way more relaxed about it. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I just missed... I just miss going for a run. I, 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 don't, I don't miss. I'm not worried about losing fitness, as I said. So, yeah, we'll be be fine. I reckon. Yeah, this week I'll be back back running, but I probably won't do a session till, um, you know, end of the like probably the start of Jan. Yeah. Cool. How up? It's all good. And I'm not even going to ask. Teacher, teacher hey. for running sixty four. <laughs> yeah, Jeez, we, had a, we had an argument about that at the time, didn't we? I remember I was up on my high horse about saying you shouldn't have been doing that workout. And look, what, look what's well, happened. Well, there's no there's no evidence to suggest that that oh. was the reason for it. <laughs> I did that session on Tuesday night at the track, and then I had a sore calf the next day at school. No, oh, I didn't. It, it was didn't week after. That? Oh, was it? No, no, yeah, I did a session at Stromlo. So I'd, I'd trained that whole week afterwards. So I did a te- tempo tre- uh, a tempo on the treadmill on the Friday. Then I went out to Stromlo and did a session. It was the day after my Stromlo session. Uh, so I'm blaming the I'm blaming the flats that I was wearing. Remember I said that last week. <laughs> yeah, he did say Potent- that last week. P- potentially, but then if you look back uh, this year, I've done the same session. Uh, I've actually done twelve four hundreds, not ten of them, and I've still and I've run a sixty four at the end of those, and my, I've been fine. Um, I actually ran a sixty three second four hundred at the end of my five k in march and i was fine so you know it's easy to it's easy to pick things like that but i don't think it always comes down to just one thing that's so. but that's like saying oh i ran across the road with my eyes closed five times and i didn't get hit well <laughs> potentially potentially last time when i got hit so you can't say it's the blindfold the reason i'm getting but i can't hit. i can't say it's i can't say it's a 64 second 400 i've done i've done more intense sessions over winter than that like i ran like Quick, yeah, two, quick 200s and 300s. You're an old boy. You're yeah. an old boy who doesn't work out like he used to. Yeah, yeah. It's changing. It might be, but you can't – I don't think you can attribute it just to one one thing. 
So was anyway, lot, you did proper um, work before that though. And you know what? But I had fun doing it, Moose. And I'm not too concerned about missing a couple of weeks of running. It's been it's good to freshen up. All right, All right. Moose. Tell us about your week. We got a bit of when, a uh, bit of a tease actually of some of your stuff on Strava this week, which I liked. Actually, yeah. before you get to that, Moose, tell me why do you only put up like I reckon people that only put like if people are using a GPS all the time and are only putting up select things. I reckon it means that they're just wanting a bit of attention. <laughs> because why would you, why would you just pick and choose when you're going to put something up? You love it. We all love attention, mate. <laughs> so, so you're agreeing with me then? We all love attention. If you're telling me you don't love the attention, then right. you're a liar. Well, I'm, happy, but I'm not after attention. I'm, I'm off Strava and I won't be coming back on. So oh, Never, ever. <laughs> Potentially not. We'll see. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, anyway, tell me about your attention-seeking runs. Oh, you should have seen me go. I was, I got so much attention on Monday. Oh, I didn't put Monday up. I should, though. <laughs> you should. I, I did. I ran up the hills first. I uh, just had an easy run, but I had a little bit. I had surges in it because I didn't do a long run Sunday. I did it Saturday. So I had a bit more license on this easy run. Went up the hills first and did some surges at the end. Ran 53 minutes, so just 12K or so. And then the next morning, woke up early. I did a um, I did a th- threshold workout where I, I actually felt terrible in this one. Um, so it's probably the worst that I've felt in a workout for a while. I think there's just a few reasons or factors why, uh, like, I was really tired after the marathon weekend where I didn't get a lot of sleep. It was maybe accumulating a little bit the mileage in my legs. Uh, yeah, just, I don't know. It just didn't feel good. I got a bit going on at work and stuff, so there's like higher amounts of anxiety, and you can almost tell like the cortisol levels are, are higher, shallower breathing. Like when I'm uh, just at rest, it, it it's a sign that like I've just got a bit of stress going on, and it, it shows in my workout. So... So this next this morning that I I ran it, um, I did two by nine minutes at up to threshold, and then nine minutes about ten beats lower. And yeah, so it's a yo-yo style workout. So the first nine minutes is about getting your heart rate up, and so it took. Well, I, I actually didn't get it up that high, so um, I ran three twenty-five pace for the first nine, and the next nine. I, I averaged 166 beats, and this is when I knew that I was sort of struggling a little bit because I couldn't quite get my heart rate down. I felt like I had to really jog to get it down. So I, I, I ran 341s for the next nine, and then I, I sort of had to get the pace going to get my heart rate up, and as soon as I picked it up, it just spiked immediately. So I ran 328, so it got slower. And then the next nine minutes, I averaged 167 heart rate. This was supposed to be on an off rep and ran 351s. So it just got massive heart rate kind of drift and the pace lagged with it. So, yeah, it wasn't a great workout, but... Was it hot? Uh, I don't think so. No, it was like 14 degrees. It was, it was humid, but it, that wasn't the reason for it. it. It just wasn't good. And I've sort of worked out even... I think it was the next day I was like, okay, there's certain things going on that are... I sort of have to um, consider because a lot of the time when we have like, well, for me in particular, if there's something going on, I try to avoid it or I try to almost attack it aggressively, like things that are causing me stress, whereas it never seems to work. The things that that, like my sort of strategies for getting through things are accepting that it's happened. And that's one thing that sort of I've been – good at I think it was the next day I went out for a run and by the time I got back it may have no actually it was actually the cool down of this run so it was the cool down I was just a good like chance to kind of think about things a bit better and just to accept some mistakes and some stuff that's gone wrong and just like deal with the consequences but as soon as you, you feel like you're accepting of, of the situation all of a sudden it's like a weight has gone off your shoulders if you know, do, do you understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah, all that you pressure's kind of, off. Yeah, like you're fighting it, fighting it, fighting it. But then you go, okay, 
this isn't working, I'll almost join it, like I'll embrace it, accept it, and then all of a sudden I just had so much more clarity around it. It's just really good. It's um, like sometimes when the weather's really bad and then you're stressing about how you're going to hit splits in that weather and then you're like, no, nah, no, nah, if I just start this workout, that's a win for the day and just see what happens. Yeah. And, that's what I always find. I'm like, and oh, not worrying about yeah. it. Accept that it's going to be bad. Even like if you do a workout and you – you make a mistake early, like you blow up in a ref and all of a sudden things are going downhill. You can probably accept that, that you've made a mistake early and get through the workout a lot better than than if you like constantly like angry at yourself for doing it or um, trying to fight your way out of it. Yeah, or say you lost 10 seconds early or whatever, then you try and make that 10 seconds back over yeah. the next couple of reps. You just need to be like, nah, 10 seconds is gone. I'm going back to the plan or I jump from there. I think... I think that's also like what I was saying before about my injury, like changing your mindset. So like my mindset now about being injured is how it should have been. Like even when I was training seriously, like just ex- accepting it and not getting so hung up on it. And like, I'm de- you're definitely in a better, a better space for doing that. But I couldn't obviously do that beforehand. No, it's very difficult when you're, mm. everything's going really good to, to be able to do that because you always feel like it's, you, the next one you're missing and the next one you're missing and yeah that's where the best athletes i'm not sure whether it's the trait that they all have but it seems like it's a like it's a really like i'm really jealous of someone who can do that mm. who, yeah. and obviously i'm like an example um someone like matt gunther who i've coached he he did his workouts pretty much all the way through to melbourne on a hilly slow road loop and and this guy was getting fit but he didn't care what his workouts looked like and so he's running like these thresholds at three minute 30 when really his threshold is probably more like 310 or so and he just didn't give a fuck and mm-hmm. i really like that because it showed that he, d- he, he sort of the, the ego's in check he doesn't care what people think about his training um he just got out there and, and did it because and, and realized that the effect that it was having and yeah, it didn't try to do it for the, for the attention. Like we were talking about just before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, that was in the morning. So the next morning I ran, um, around Canadian. So that's up like a forest up here. Uh, next day, um, down in Anglesey again, just an hour, um, around the hill. So I've got some climbing in this week. And then I did a workout on the Friday morning. So got out to Jarrah Site Road. So if you look at the map on Strava, you can see it's right near Bells Beach for those interstate and international um, listeners. It's a pretty famous surf spot. It's off that movie. Brad, what was it? Uh, oh, man, was it? It's um, one Keanu Reeves is in, isn't it? Yeah, Point Break. Point Break 2. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, so the workout was 2K. At, all right, so this is like I had a conversation with Ali before the work workout. This is the workout at 2K, 3 by 1K, 5 by 500. She'd written down 2K at threshold, 2 by 1K at 10K pace, 4 by 500 at 5K pace or intensity. I'm like, that's too easy. That's That session's too easy. So I've got to add some. I've got to add something. So I said, I'm going to go to do 2K, then 4 by one k and 6 by 500 and I'm going to do them a little bit harder. But what actually happened was I I, um, I, I only added one 1K rep and one 500 rep because I did, did go way too hard in this as well. But it's nice. It's still judging my effort at VO2 is really difficult. Like getting the, getting the effort right in the first 30 seconds of a K rep, I'm just not good at it. I just go too hard. And by that stage... I've got a pace on my watch. I'm like, fuck, I hate the feeling of slowing down in the middle of a rep. Like, I, I feel like that's a regression and I really don't like it. It's the same with doing a workout, like, uh, and your first reps heaps heaps faster than your, your last few reps. Like, that's a bad feeling, isn't it, to walk away from those workouts? Have you always had this problem or is it just since you come back from this um, injury? It's just re- recently where I've like I just get excited by workouts mm. and it just 
I just go hard and I don't really understand. I, my perception of effort is not good right now. So I'm not really in tune with, with my body at all. And so the first 2K, it was downhill, granted. Um, so it felt easy. Uh, first 2K, I did, uh, I think I ran three tens. Then just jogged them. Everything was a minute rest. So 305, 305 back up the hill. And then 303, it's starting to feel a bit hard now, a bit pinchy. Went into the 500s. Uh, so 88, 86, 85, 89, 87. And yeah, it was. Um, I was stopping after every rep at the end, and sort of hands on knees. So I was really pushing it. It was like a track workout, really, where you gas yourself and then you rest, and then you gas yourself again and rest. Watch <laughs> so, out, mate! Don't don't get injured for going too hard. I'm in. Alpha, I'm not wearing LT threes, mate, from the '70s. <laughs> I've got these shoes on now that look after you. You should get a pair. No, but now you're saying that well, you've com- just you've just changed your tune. You said it was all because of the 400s. I wasn't in those shoes for the 400s. I was on the I was at Stromlo in the LT threes. Like. <laughs> Continual bad decision after bad decision. <laughs> the point is, the point is, you're basically making similar mistakes, but you just, you know, you'll be injured next week or two weeks time. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, hope not. Carry on, Moose. Can I just quickly ask that um perceived effort early? Do you think your cadence has maybe changed since you like got your knee sorted out? Yeah, I reckon. Like you reckon you're a bit smooth, a bit quicker, ticking them over quicker, and then that's that's equal to a quicker pace. I feel like I'm smoother for sure because I'm not. Um, I've got more leg. I don't even know what the word flexion or whatever. Turnover. But I can, what are you, I don't know. Cadence. Uh, it's really turnover. It's it's like oh, the my, way your knee comes up and rolls. Pick up my bum more, yeah. so my flex more, and and I, I've got more of a range of motion. I think that's the issue. That, I'm diagnosing you with that. I reckon you've got your smoother technique after your knee's been sorted out, which means you're ticking the legs over quicker, which means you're, you're putting in the same effort you're always used to, but because you're smoother, you're going quicker. So mechanically, it's mm. more it's, um, it's easier for me to run faster, yeah. but my, my lungs and heart can't keep yeah. up. Yeah, you know, like, one, one, this yeah. Is once, once you're fit, though, this could be a good thing for you. Yeah, I've, I've got, a, got a couple of races coming up low key ones all right that's good or else they come scalp me who what have you got to tell us at the end of your week i've already told you uh, the, the rue run or whatever yeah, yeah. are you going to do the kids race as well that day didn't last no. time you did it you did like the 3k kids race and won that and then you won the 10k or something that's just like iconic status legend status of the race forever and there's it's a just... photo of you on the podium next to like a seven-year-old and a nine-year-old that's like this and that crap. Eight hundred and three k in AB Shield, mate. Yeah, yeah. You got this guy with a real creepy moustache next to like seven year old kids on the podium. <laughs> there were adults hiding somewhere in that pig. I just don't know where they went. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's a good what workout. You, what do you got that photo on you, dude? Someone sent it to me. Yeah, that gets around a bit. That one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, ran with. Uh, your mate actually Ash Hoffman the next day he was down at Anglesey oh, very yeah. short man Ash very what sorry very short he is like very short yeah and you I think yeah way shorter than me yeah so he's a very angry little short man too then next day we had a long run so I had a license on this one to, to, to feel to go a bit quicker if I felt good and you know you're going to take that when everyone's backing up from Melbourne Marathon the week before and feeling shit so <laughs> just an opportunity there just like I had this peg for months out I'm like this is the week that they're all going to be wanting an easy slow flat jog this is the week that I crush them and only some of them went with me but Will Will Newton he's going to do Hobart he's pretty fit he might run 230 down there um, Hoffman for how short and unfit he is held on well and Kieran he ran 73 at the half so these guys are all moving pretty well we, 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 we were pretty hilly, actually. How much hills was that? Like 500, 600 metres, I reckon. It felt hilly, and it was on, like, real rocky shit. So half the time, you're jumping from side to side as well as up. Uh, yeah, 460. So the legs got real fatigued through the, the early stages when it was pretty hilly. And then we, we got going a bit on some downhills and then hit one hill late where we, we pretty much went all out. Well, I did. 
um, heart rate got up to like 182. Real Brad Croker style long run this one. <laughs> Just pushing the pace late, yes. feeling good about myself. The average 15 seconds a K slower. No, and that's the thing. That's the difference between me and him. Yeah. And went for 15 minutes less. Is that I'm not as fit. Give it a couple of weeks. Yeah, 110, um, 110K or 108K for the week. So it's coming. It's coming. Mm. Yeah, when that session popped up, I'm like, this boy's fit. I think because you haven't I, yeah. you listen to it, but you don't see it visually on Strava every week. And then all of a sudden that popped up. I'm like... Yeah, he's, he's snuck up on us here, Croaks, his fitness. That's not fit, Brady. Like, you you should have seen me, though. I was working. That's that's the difference here, is that you would do this workout and you would finish going, yeah. oh, yeah, this workout. I finished and I'm like, oh, I am fucking cooked. Like, I need a Coca-Cola quickly. But when I look at your workouts, I associate that you do workouts in control, not yeah. that you do workouts like you just explained. Mm. Yeah. Now, right. is, now you've explained very, it now, I'm just like, oh, yeah. oh, maybe it's not that impressive. Moose is very much the do as I say, not what <laughs> I do. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to learn things. I'm relearning things. I'm relearning how to be an athlete. Yeah, it's good, you're honest, though. I like that. Take you through my week quickly. Not much to report. I ran 20 minutes on Wednesday just to test out the legs. Quads, really, yeah, pretty sore. Like, I was walking around the house all good. I'm like, oh, these super shoes. I'll be right. I'm, I'm coming back super quick. And then I got about three minutes into that 20 minutes and I was like, nah, my quad's pretty cooked here. So, um, yeah, I was pretty disappointed and kept it at 20 minutes and one second there, 4.42 pace, had Thursday off. Friday, met up with Archie and um, did his warm-up with him. So, like, 30 minutes at 4.22s and the quads were definitely feeling a bit better, which was nice. And then Saturday, I also went out for 30 minutes at 4.36s just by myself. And then Sunday, met up with the boys who had their long run, and I just did an hour at 4.17s. And that was, oh, I probably got about 45, 50 minutes in before I felt the quads at all. And um, yeah, it was good to get through that, just talking. Haven't run with those couple of boys for a while, so it was good to um, see Glenn and Archie, kind of keep them company for a bit of their long run, just before Storm come in, actually. So... Um, yeah, windy and stormy and things like that. Did Archie, did Archie show you his, his medal that he won at Melbourne? His medal? Yeah. Oh, his age group medal. 20 to 24 years old, first place. Was he first, was he? I thought he was second or third, didn't I say? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Let me check that. I've got his Strava right here. I he was third. Did. He had a pretty good week last week, Archie, for a bloke who hasn't done a lot of training in the last three months. He ran a 14.30 and a 66 off. I think he averaged 70 k's for 13 weeks aren't you coaching him why is he doing 70 k weeks he's back on he's back on now for zatapec no nah, he just he just works so so much and he's like 20 he's got other stuff going on in his life and i think because i was doing the marathon build up as well like i wasn't there to meet him and do workouts and stuff which probably changed his routine a bit but my next um five six weeks is all about holding the stopwatch for him helping him out with his warm-ups and cool-downs, just being a bit accountable, someone to meet for the workouts and things like that, so we can have a good one at um at Zatapec. That's the plan anyway. We'll see how that goes the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I think I don't think he won that age group, Moose. I think he was second or third. I just saw the, um, the post about it, that's all. Post, yeah. Get the social post out there. Um, let's thank some Patreon supporters, eh? Yeah, he was third, 20 to 24. Jeez, who was first and second then? Because wasn't he like eighth overall? You know who we didn't give enough credit to last week for their run at Melbourne? Tim Vincent. 62 minutes he ran. Mm. That was a pretty good run by Timmy Vincent. Yeah, he's, he's he's making moves, isn't he? He is, yeah. Let's thank some Patreon supporters, eh? Kicks off croaks. All right, I've got Bartek Zielinski. Uh Bartek lives down in Clayton in Victoria. Uh, he ran the Melbourne half last weekend in 150.53. Uh, some of his other estimated best on Strava are 22.46 for 5K, 48.46 for 10, and 4 hours 33 for the marathon, which he did in a time trial. Uh, he's a great supporter of the show and has a photo promoting us on his Strava. He also wrote in a nice um, uh, letter today on Patreon. I don't know if you saw that, Brady, about um, just how inspired he was seeing the front uh, the, the lead marathon pack as they like as they sort of cross paths on the Sunday. So, um, yeah, thanks for taking the time to write in and uh, thanks for your support, Bartek. Do you get emails, Croaks, every time we get something on Patreon? 
No, I don't. I used to, but I don't anymore. I've got to check our settings. So, yeah, I haven't seen that, but I'll look, uh, look mm. forward to reading that from Bartek. Thanks for your support. And, um, yeah, he had some cool photos of the lead pack on this Strava as well. So it's cool mm. to see someone who's um, getting some inspiration from those legends out the front there. Moose, who you got? So he was he was taking photos of them as he was running? Is that what you mean? He must, no. Or how did no, he get the photos if he was doing the half? He ran the half. How can you take photos? Yeah, no, I think there's, I think there's, they're photos that he's found, like, um, you know, in somebody's, somebody, I think there was Ed Goddard got interviewed on a podcast, and so, because there's a photo up there of um, Ed, Brett, and Tom, but it's from Launceston. Oh, yeah, On, on his Strava, so it's not even, yeah. There was one from Melbourne, though. There was oh. one from Melbourne, but I reckon he's got it from somewhere else. I don't think he's taken it. I listened to that interview with Ed Goddard on the, um, that, the Running Guy podcast, he, he didn't have a drink. He missed all his drinks for the whole race. I was mowing the lawns the other day and put my headphones in. And he was wearing his mum's watch because he, he's broke and he didn't know what pace he was running. Had his mum's garment on, told him it was going, he was going six-minute K pace. <laughs> he went through a bit slow then. Yeah. yeah. So a few little uh, you know, hiccups for Ed in his debut there. But seen hand on pretty well. Um, Moose, who are you thinking? Uh, Mr. Luke Critchley from Romsey, Victoria. Pretty nice. Part of the world, Romsey. Be a good spot to live, wouldn't it? I was thinking this when I typed this today, Romsey. Close to Melbourne, but not too close, that you're still in kind of regional. Yeah, I reckon um, Collis grew up in Romsey, or like around there. Oh, yeah, it was there, or it was because he ran for Bendigo Harriers or something, was his first athletics club. I reckon it, it was close yeah. to Bendigo. Yeah, yeah, I remember we went for it. We, we actually had a um, wedding in. Oh, what's that like nice place up there where people get married in that? Yeah, I don't know, like Heathkit. Like I reckon it was Heathkit or Axdale or somewhere near there. No, it's that. No, it's close. Anyway, it, it, we we ran around the race course there, and he's like, "Yeah, that did all my junior cross country here." Uh, at the at the it was like the trot there, I think. Um, anyway, uh, he's from Romsey. Luke Critchley, he ran 1959, 5K, 42, 14, 10, 137 half marathon. That was at Burnley, 2019. Ooh, the fast day. Everyone's got their PBs from that day. Been a bit quiet on Strava, November, December. Maybe off at like Croaks is. Not me, I'm back. Owns a brown dog. Got to be a Calpy, does it? No, right? it wasn't a Calpy, right? I don't think this one. Not sure what this one was. If it was a Calpy, I would have put it in there because I would have been confident. Dark brown or light brown? Uh, kind of like a light brownie. Light brown, like a tan? Yeah, oh, look, I don't know, mate. I'm not going to be able to tell you what kind of dog it was. Uh, it doesn't mind a paddle paddle ride. Paddle and bike riding. It does oh. a bit of both. A bit of paddle boarding, a bit of bike riding. Okay, um, stand-up paddle boarding? No, it was more like the kayak, canoe kind of one. Oh, yeah, like kayaking. That's way more blue collar than stand-up paddle boarding. Stand up paddle boarding, there's, mo- there's different ways of it. Like, there's being up in Byron Bay doing it and, and doing yoga on it. And then there's paddle boarding across, like, the Molokai Channel in Hawaii. That's pretty brutal, actually, doing that stand up. And then there's surfing as well. well so, you, well, you've missed what about the one that goes down the Murray River in Achuga? That's more like the Molokai one. It's the race, right? I oh, know, there's just like a tourist thing to do here. One of oh, Kylie's friend owned a business. She was at her house today, actually. She, you get in a, yeah, they drop you down the river like two or three K and then you paddle down, they pick you up the other end. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's a pretty cool thing. Next time you're in town, I'll book you in for it. Get 10% off, I reckon. I know the owner. I'm going to thank uh, Luke Olding from Meadow Wee, which I'm pretty sure is pretty close to Newcastle in uh, New South Wales there. 8.42 for 5K, 1.32 at the Newey Half Marathon. And 3.36 at the, not sure what marathon that one was. Don't have it in the notes here, Luke. Um, real high up in the supermarket world. I think he owns a supermarket or manages a supermarket, something like that. Uh, pretty busy these next couple of weeks. I know because I write his program and it's a pretty stressful time for him at this uh, time of the year, close to Christmas. Everyone getting all their supplies. Owns a Coros. Uh, trains. Sorry, tracks the streets he runs in. I need to ask him what website he uses for this because I was on his Strava today and it kind of gives him an update. So it must match up the GPS 
and then um, shows him how much percent of the streets in his town these actually ran on, and he's hit 100% of his town. So I thought that was pretty cool. And I thought that'd be cool like to do someone like me who often runs around a Chuka Moema to just match all my data up and see how much percent I've nailed without actually being trying to nail the percentage. You boys could do the same. See how you're going. So thanks, Luke. Luke and Bartek for your support. Anyone else wants to support us on Patreon? Christmas time's coming up. If you want to support us, end of the year kind of vibes, being listening to the show for free all year, you can support us on Patreon if it brings you value. Five bucks a month is our minimum one. And um, yeah, heaps of bonus stuff at the different levels on there. All the details, patreon.com forward slash inside running podcast. I think we've got podcasts in that, don't we? I think so, boys. Yeah, I think so. Probably should have checked that before I said that. Uh, some Vic Miles Cubs results, Moose. Yes, so I actually missed this. I, I, I wanted to watch it, but for some reason, um, just didn't show up, just didn't pop up on my socials. Normally it does that, reminds me. Like, you know, it'll pop up and say, this Vic Miles Athletics exclusive is live or whatever. Yep. Just missed it. Um, so... The, the, the results uh, in the men's race, Edward Baisha, uh, he ran 347.67. Thomas Diamond, he ran 347.86, so very close there. And Wolfgang, Wolfie, Wolfie Kotra and Nemesi ran 348.20. What a brilliant name. Strong name, isn't it? Abby Caldwell was the winner of the ladies. She wins a lot, actually. Mm. She... One in four oh eight oh two, so that's solid. That's a solid time. Second, Jayla Hancock Cameron, four eleven ninety three, and Rebecca Green, four sixteen fifteen. Hmm. And they also had eight hundreds. So uh, Matt Hussey, one in one fifty oh six. Second, DeGrasse and Makata, and third, Harrison May, all were in one fifty. Uh, so that was close. Um, Ali Sanford, 203.06, won the ladies. Tess Kersop Cole. Gee, that's fast for a milers as well, isn't it? Mm, it is, yeah. The ladies had the day out or the night out. Tess Kersop Cole, 206.92, and Eleanor Benson, 211.38. Yeah, especially the, the women, women's 15 and the 8. They've ran quick times, but they've actually won by quite a lot as well. So look, I can imagine I also missed it, but I can imagine they were kind of almost time trialing it. I think um, Abby Caldwell may have had a pacemaker for a bit of that race, but she still would have had to spend a whole lot of it by herself. So she won by three seconds. Yeah, I think it was um, Claudia. Is it Claudia Hollingsworth? I yeah. think paced. Yeah, that's a um, um, really young, talented girl, isn't it? The Mot- yeah. Mottram coaches. Yeah. So I reckon both those girls are ones to watch over the next couple of years. I think they're going to run some pretty quick times. Vic Milers does a great job with all that junior talent too. Like, yeah. Without mm. sounding super old, you used to look through these results and know every single person, and now, like, I don't know any of those 1,500-metre boys. Yeah, um, you're not in that world anymore, though. You you can't expect to know them. Mm, yeah, I don't know. I wish I did. It'd be kind of interesting to keep... Because this would have been the Luke Matthews and the Stewies and the... You know what I mean? Those kind of guys back in the day before they broke through winning yeah. these things. So, yeah, but anyway, it is good that there's streams available to uh, watch these races live. We'll go back on the replay. And then um, Croaks, New South Wales have got Sydney Miles Club as well, don't they? Yeah, so this is put on by Bankstown. Um, so traditionally, this has always been the Abby Thomas Mile um, meet, but that didn't take place this year just because of um, – uh, they just weren't sure with the whole COVID thing, so they decided a few weeks out that they were still going to put, a, put on a meet but it wasn't going to be like the the Alby Thomas Mile, so um, they had 800s and uh, and mile. So in the men's 800, uh, Riley McGowan, who uh, lives in Canberra, he won in 151.50. Luke Boys second 151.88, and third was Max Roslin, uh, also a Canberra guy in 152.27. Uh, women's race uh, taken out by Haley Kitching 207.27. Ivy Boothroyd, um, 207.85, and Matilda Ryan, 208.42. Um, then in the women's mile, Ainsley Van Graan gets another shout-out on the show. She won in 438.16. Uh, Olympian, Georgia Winkup was second, 438.50, and Kate Spencer was third in 440.53. 
Uh, and lastly, in the men's, um, it was a clean sweep to Ben Liddy's central performance squad. Tom Davies won in 407.54. Mason Cohen, 800 specialist, 408.33. And Lockie Raper, who's also an 800 metre man, 408.88. I'm not sure if you guys saw this race, but um, Joe Burgess took off after about 150 accelerated that fast that it was pretty much catch me if you can like he had i don't know like 50 meters like even more at one point of the race um but got run down uh with you know one or 200 to go i suppose so it was quite entertaining to watch hey his coach is sean Crichton. do you reckon he tells him to do that before the race or Uh, just a bit of white one fever from joe yeah i don't know because he sort of he went pretty hard in the um the new south wales 3k as well yeah yeah, look, like, to be fair, like, they weren't going super quick. Like, he he went through in, like, basically 60 like – like, he was running pretty much 60-second lap. So it's, you know, not ridiculously quick. But watching the watching the footage, I reckon that the, the acceleration that he put in between, like, 150 and, like, uh, 300 – was just so it was so intense that that probably came back to bite him a little bit like it it was almost like he'd been shot out of a gun like that's how yeah it just took off so um makes it entertaining the watch it did make make it entertaining uh over wa sinead noonan broke the wa state 5k record over there she ran 1557 taking down olympic marathon as sue malaxos um 26 year old state record so a big result over there in the west fishing aid to go under 16 minutes founded and formulated by professional athletes and leading accredited sports dietitians pillar performance is bridging the gap between clinical medicine and sports supplementation australia's first sports micronutrition brand pillars range is purposefully formulated to support joint health recovery energy production and immunity. Pillar believes that optimal recovery and performance is more complex than just managing your macros, and arguably it's the micros or vitamins and minerals that are the true heavy hitters in performance nutrition. Purposefully formulated with elite outcomes in mind, Pillar uses only the best ingredients at a clinical dose to fuel peak performance. Pillar's opening range is led by Motion Armor, a first to market joint protection formulation and triple magnesium an elite sports magnesium for optimum muscle recovery. Pillar has become the choice of Australian sport thanks to their elite formulations and batch testing program, currently working with Ben St. Lawrence, Izzy Bat Doyle and Riley Cox, along with more than 24 sporting teams across the country. For more information on Pillar Performance and their range of sports micronutrition, head to www.pillarperformance.com.au. To score yourself a discount on any purchases via Pillar's website, Use the code INSIDE10 for $10 off at checkout. Listen to question, Croaks. Uh, yep, yeah, so it says, congrats on your eighth place and marathon result. I guess he's referring to you there, Brady. Uh, enjoy your time off the pod. Questions for you when you're back uh, or tonight. Oh, uh, still had a week it, to go. It was, on, it was on Inside Jogging Pod. Who is the best athlete you guys have beaten in a race? Sounds like a good one to relive old glories. And that comes in from Lee G. Yeah, I did. I enjoyed listening to the boys talk about this. They had Australian guys they were talking about too in their answers. Yeah, I listened to that. that. Mottram. Yeah, yeah, Mottram from Aaron and then um, Brett Robinson from Josh Lund. Yeah, that was good. Which part, So when did you beat Brett? Uh, London. Oh, yeah, maybe London when he DNF that year. No. Oh. And then Mottram okay. when he ran the London Marathon. Yeah, yeah, I was wondering about this. Because surely not. Do you don't reckon it counts if they DNF? Oh no, I no, I wouldn't count. I wouldn't count a DNF. <laughs> wouldn't I don't know though. No. Well, I, I wouldn't. Think... I, w- I wouldn't be bragging about beating somebody the DNFs though. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you don't brag about it. But example, you come fifteenth in that race. You beat the people that didn't finish because they made errors, poor training bad tactical mm. strategy whatever that's them not finishing the race due to their own error and losing yeah mm. that's true true but. so what about this one then uh berlin i think it was 2018 i beat Wils- wilson kipsang and kenny bakili both stepped off those fellas so uh that's my one for the answer 
Nah, I don't. I'm just, I'm just putting the point forward. I don't believe it. What about, Not when you say that. Yeah, that, yeah. Well, that milks it a bit too much. <laughs> didn't Steig in one year, Mottram started and didn't finish Moose? Remember that? Were you there that year? Steig in 10K? He was pacing, he was pacing, he was pacing I think. Didn't he pace he did, or he did pace one year. He paced one year and I literally sat behind him for 20 laps. I reckon the first 8K, I was in the box seat. No one moved any positions at all. But so I reckon the year running. after he went to race and he pulled out. Yeah, yeah. Is this, okay. how, is this how you're answering it, Brady? You're going to actually pick guys that just DNF. Well, no, he was it, genuinely going to race that year. Yeah, yeah, but like, you're, so your answer though is people who have DNF. Like, you're not going to have, you, you haven't, you're not going to name somebody that you've beaten. Oh, I don't know. Oh, what about, how's this one? What about um, when you beat people in handicap races? Jeff Risley, I beat him in the mile at store. What's yeah. he, 332 guy, 333? Yeah. Uh, Gave me an 85 metre head start. Yeah, keep going. You know, you know what? Tip. Brady, I might even have one for you. You so Sydney ten in twenty. You raced Sydney ten in twenty fifteen, didn't you? Yeah, one of those years. I think two of those years actually. So Jack Rayner was in that race. Did I beat him? Well, I th- I think so. And Jack ran like thirty fifty, and you would have been like low thirties. The thing is with these guys though, because I do, I remember racing Jack in like AV stuff, but they're like seventeen, and you're like twenty six. And he like was not. Yeah, he was nineteen at yeah. that. Not 19 at that point. Um, Did I beat him? Have you got the results there? Well, I'm just looking at you. Yeah, uh, yeah. go to Moose and I'll let you know. Who you got, Moose? You well, get world yeah. champs. Who DNF that year? No, no one really that good. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, like, I actually, when we started booking it, like when we started talking about this, I'm like, oh, shit, someone would have DNF there. But I can't see anybody that matters. So... No, I just look behind me in that list, and I mean, there's not that many behind me. But there was Stephen Scullion, who ended up running two oh nine. Yeah, so Irish guy. Andrew, yeah, yeah, he's probably it. He's probably the guy that I would pick because I legitimately beat him. It wasn't a DNF, and uh, it wasn't like he's. 58 years old and you've beaten him on the track or he's 14 Brady and you've beaten him at some mm. fun run somewhere <laughs> that like prime of our careers both of us and didn't he run the um didn't he run 209 like a couple months after as well like it was really close to when you beat him yeah it was it was close for sure I reckon he ran like 211 and then ran 209 another time yeah mm. yeah that's a good one what about yeah, you got, like you got him? You got him, Brady. You ran thirty. You ran thirty nineteen. How old was he? Uh, nineteen. How old was I? Did it say? Oh, we have 20, 2015. Six years ago, <laughs> 27, 26, somewhere like that. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's doable. That's comparable. Nineteen yeah. to twenty six. Hey, that one. What, <laughs> Brad? You got no one, right? No, I got a couple. Well, if we're taking out, if we're taking people that are younger than twenty, then that takes yeah, out nineteen. Uh, as long as they're over, nineteen that, or over, we'll take. So that, well, we've got Jack from that um, uh, from Sydney 10. We've got Paddy Tiernan when he was 17. Oh. Um, but here's one for you. Lake Biwa, I beat Kenta Muriyama by uh, 16, no, 17 seconds. I actually passed him on the track. Um, and so for those that don't know, Kenta Muriyama... Has, he finished second at Gold Coast, ran 209 at the Gold Coast, uh, has a PB of 208.56 in Berlin, uh, 27.39, 10K. So but the, but the, so hats off to him, though, for finishing the race because he went through halfway in 63.57. <laughs> I went through halfway in 69.32. And even at 35K, he had almost just under four minutes on me. So I've made up four minutes in the last 7K. Um, so poor guy, but yeah, he obviously bounced back to run 208.56 in 29. Or well, he ran 20, he ran 209 something on the Gold Coast later that year. And then the year later ran 208.56 in Berlin. Crazy so that's not a, ba- that's not a, like that's not a bad, that's not a bad scout though, is it? That's a pretty good one. Done yeah. some real digging though, because who the hell has heard of <laughs> yeah. that guy? And I love how he said for people that haven't heard of him. <laughs> yeah. like, Mate, I'm sitting here never heard of him in my life. Half the blokes that finish in like two twenty something at BYU or two ten guys. Well, this guy ran at the World Champs. He represented Japan in the ten K at one of the World Champs. 
you'd heard of him before the race? Uh, no, <laughs> I was told about him after the race. <laughs> That's good. I like that. Any more ones to think of? Actually, so what do you reckon his slowest 5K split was? I don't know. How have you found these results? Because uh, I got my results. They sent, they sent them out to you. He had a 1901 from 35 to 40K. Yeah, this doesn't count. This guy's just finished and he gets his appearance fee. This, Come this, on, this, this doesn't answer. count. Where, and you're, but you're, you're counting people that DNF'd. Dogging this, for is, a bonus. this is better. This is better than counting people at DNF. When you anyway. beat when you beat Kenny Bikili, give me a ring. That's all I'm saying. Or Wilson keeps saying he's still serving a ban. I think. All right, fellas, we'll move on from that segment. Thanks for that question, though, Lee. That was uh, a very good one. I had a few laughs there. Just trying to get our guest organised here, fellas. Just gave him a bit of a warning, saying that I'll give him a buzz. Just trying to insert him in. If you've been listening to the podcast the last couple of weeks, you'll know that we've been trying to call our. Uh, panelists for the new project coming up in a few weeks. What day is it, Croaks? 3rd of Jan or something like that? Uh, yeah, I think we're recording on the maybe the 5th of Jan. We're recording Jan. the first episode. Heard from Jess last week. And uh, this man here, welcome uh, from Queensland, Lewis McAfee. How are you going? Yeah, good. I was um, just thinking it's probably two years to the day <laughs> since we last spoke. Oh, it's funny you bring that up because Croaks was talking about that about 35 minutes ago. One of the highlights of his running careers for people who uh, haven't been listening for that long. Two years ago, Steigen hashtag one meet, which we did win. Lewis McAfee was our team captain. Also as PBs of 13.49, 28.51 and 64.14 for the half marathon. Often referred to as the big dog of the, uh, the state of Queensland, the Gold Coast Run Company up there and uh, sponsored by On Running. So, Louis, we're pretty stoked to have you on board for this little side project. Yeah, I'm stoked to be on board. It's good that you've introduced Jess and then me, then the other panellists. I think it just goes top <laughs> top down to bottom. Yeah, very interesting. Well, you don't even need sandwich. to introduce the other one. He's, uh, yeah, he's... <laughs> Uh, what's been happening? Introduce himself. <laughs> what's been he probably will. What's been happening up there? What give us an update from Queensland? Open the Not borders. Much. Yeah, they just opened the borders on uh, when was it the seventeenth. So um, all my family's come up for Christmas, which is pretty awesome. But it was what thirty seven degrees when I ran today, so. Not easy. I was thinking that these uh, 10 weeks that we hear about your training is going to be probably a challenging time for you to train through. Is that like what you think about January, Feb most years? Yeah, it's just that nothing's really special when you finish a session. It's uh, <laughs> nothing goes well and nothing goes to plan, but you still get it done, which is probably the only thing that you can get out of it. Yeah, and then like your races in the first bit of 2022, what do you got locked in? <clears throat> Um, I got a couple things that I'll look to do. Um, I just started a new job, so I don't know how much I can actually get down to, but I'd love to do Zatapec. Um, and then I'd love to do Run the Bridge. And potentially, Jacko and I were talking about doing a marathon, but that might be a little bit after. It's probably March, April. Oh, very You yeah. got Gold Coast, didn't you, Louis? Uh, yeah, I missed out. But, yeah, I was ready for it some good workouts and a big 30 you did a 30k race in what like three tens or something didn't you yeah through the spit i'm sure brady when we took you in there is nothing special so i was i was happy with it but like you never know with a marathon you could be doing really good workouts and then you could also run three hours so i don't know i was i was fit but i was expecting it to hurt now I've been there, is would you just go up and back? Because isn't that road only like four or five k? Oh, they went through the trails. So oh, it was you went like through a, there. Yeah, it was like a fifteen k loop. Oh. Um, so yeah, we went like maybe four k on the road through City World, and then um, for anyone that's from the coast, we pretty much followed the Federation Trail, which was like six or seven k of up and down hills, um, and then you spit out at the end of the um the rock wall there so it was yeah two 15k loops boys that's that's like cross country through there rolling hills sandy paths things like that that's not fast at all what did you average for that uh i think it was like 307s 
because I, I ran another K, like the um, person on the bike took me the wrong way. I just wanted to get a, a good workout in, so I did, didn't really matter about the um, how many Ks I did. I just said, <laughs> load them up. It hey, was, um, yeah, it was very, you noticed that, it was very disappointing, you know, for guys like you, hometown guy, Gold Coast Marathon was going to happen. It was an exciting debut. And then, I yeah, I trained with you on that Tuesday or Wednesday, and then that day it got shut down. And, um, yeah, how did you, did you cope with that all good? Like, it must have been hard to deal with. <laughs> For the first two days, I was so good. I, I thought, yeah, I'll just um, get ready for Melbourne. And I really wanted to give Melbourne or Sunny Coast a good crack. And then it slowly unraveled after that. Because <laughs> we went through a lockdown, um, another lockdown in August. And probably only a week. So I'm not really uh, one to talk about going through lockdowns. But, yeah, it just uh, it was a slow, unwinding Ravel, but um, I was not fit in like October, so I needed to kick myself in the gear. Yeah, Louis, I'm just on your Strava. It looks like you know your skyscrapers. There's a few sort of ups and downs throughout the year, and I, I read somewhere that you know th- over the last year or two that there's been times where your motivation hasn't been super high. Like, is that true? And and what do you put that down to? Yeah, probably um, racing for me. So, like. 2019 I had an awesome year because I was racing probably every second or third weekend I don't know it's just something about the start line and like having something to prepare for and not having anything to prepare for I'm not really one that gets up for like time trials or big sessions so uh, yeah probably I don't log everything on Strava and I did go away for a little bit um I think like everyone just sick of um like social media but uh, it hasn't been an unbelievably smooth road but hoping that uh next year and the year after will be a lot better any any injuries this year um not particularly just like a couple of tendon issues um i can never really get away from them i think yeah i just roll my ankle heaps and then run on it and then eventually turns into something but nothing major which is good Hey, uh, the training group up there, one of your training partners had a pretty good race at Melbourne last week, Tim Vincent, 62 minutes. Must have been pretty proud of him seeing that result come in. Oh, an absolute blind up. Yeah. That was awesome. Um, yeah, it's been awesome to – I mean, he is so committed and so motivated, which is awesome for me. Um, and we've got another guy, Liam, who trains with us, Liam Booden, um, who's probably just on the cusp of doing something good. Um, and then Jordo, who was in that Steigen one team, is always in and around the mix. But, yeah, I mean, and Tim's race at uh, Bridge to Brisbane was pretty unreal as well. Mm. So it's good to see people not from Victoria get up. A little good news story. <laughs> well, he still came fourth, didn't he? I think there were three Victorians in front of him. <laughs> I think he came third. Oh, did he? Oh, third. But he did, he did win Bridge to Brisbane. That's and right. um, it was, was it Grego was... Fifth. Yeah, that was an amazing. Yeah, I remember talking about that on the show. Like his last two and a half k was like insane quick. And then went yeah. to work at Bunnings. Yeah, he did. <laughs> they spun that story, but um, he he's doing uni. He just um also works at Bunnings. Hey, what about you though? Uh, you just touched on it before starting a new job. Another school teacher, Moose. <laughs> Why they let this bloke work with children? <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually surprised that they did. No, uh, I got a police check and it was all good, so it's all smooth. <laughs> no, I do. I um, I graduated at the end of this year and um, contemplated whether to do part time, but just want that uh, blue collar work ethic that Moose always talks about, but doesn't actually do. It's an easy life being a teacher. It's a trick. <laughs> It's easy at this time of the year when you're on six weeks holidays, Moose. Give me the hot tip. Give hey. up on your life goals. <laughs> an, early, an, an early retirement. Any more <laughs> questions for him, boys, before we hear from him in January? No, just have a great Chrissy. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to following your training in early 2022. I've got one question, actually. Oh, um, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably an important one. Brady calls you Lewis. That's, is that right or is it Louis? No, it's Louis. 
Yeah, like, I thought so. <laughs> I've been called Lewis my whole life, your so first, I just let it slide. Your full name's Lewis, though, isn't it? Lewis McAfee. Nah, it's Louis. Is it? <laughs> it's Louis McAfee. Bra- if we want to get technical. Bra- Brady's uh, Brady's never been great with names. <laughs> That's not the hardest name. Jeez, I always thought thought that was how it's spelled. Louis, yeah, it's how it's spelled. Louis it's yeah. McAfee. But Brady also thought that Warwick was pronounced Warwick. <laughs> Damn, they're making stuff up now, Louis. <laughs> All right. Well, we cleared that up before we got 10 weeks with him anyway, boys. Uh, just let you butcher that one. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, mate. Thank you. All right, thank you. Have a good Christmas, and, uh, yeah, we'll hear from you in Jan. Yep, all righty. See you guys. See you, mate. See you, mate. Bye. All right, Moose, your turn. Put all three of these things together for me. Moose on the loose, purchase of the week, rules of Strava. Give us a big combo. Oh, gee, you put me on the spot here. Um Oh, shit. Okay, so, uh, Moose on the Loose this week. Um, I'm going to, what have I, have I mentioned anything upsetting to you guys lately? Oh, okay. All right. Um, ooh, ooh. What, what's annoyed me lately on the long run? Um, people that complain on the long run about it being hilly. When you, like I sent a map before with the run even started, right? So you knew what you were in for, yet you're still complaining about the hills when you're out there. This is a bloke, for, this is Aubrey actually. I think it's something about the Murray River. But they were going up the hill and Ash Hoffman goes, oh, it's hills, it's shit, I hate this shit. I'm like, why? Why do you hate this? Oh, it's just real hard work. I'm like, I fucking love hard work, Ash. Why do you why do you, why don't you love hard work? That's how you're going to get better. That's why you've never broken two thirty, because you complain about hills on your long run. Do you think Brad complains, Brady, about hills on his long run? He loves it. He embraces hills on his long run. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe not. I don't enjoy them all the time, but I know that they're good for me. So I'll suck suck it up. Of course you will. You think <laughs> Elliot Kipchoge complains about the hill that's at the twenty k mark on his long run? Brady complained about the first hill at Mulligans and it's not even a hill. Yeah. Brady complained on that run in Geelong that we went on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not yeah. a lot of hills where he comes from, I though. Actually I actually like guess. hills because I don't get to run on them that often. Then why do you whinge about them? I wasn't, I wasn't whinging. I don't know how this has turned to me. It was Ash Hoffman, wasn't it? <laughs> anyway, that's just a bone to pick with people that don't accept it. But there are going to be things about your running that are hard and you don't have to complain about them. Because it's just part and parcel of it. And anyway, that's I'm complaining about him complaining. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas um, purchase of the week. What do you got? What's coming from Santa? A few whiskeys last night by the sounds of it. Oh, yeah. Oh, so here's a good one. Here's a good little waste of my money. So <laughs> went up to the bar yesterday. It was about whiskey o'clock. And um, I said, I, I saw the whiskey at, like on the bar that I love. It's my favorite whiskey. It's from Suntory and... Japan and it's called Hibiki and so I'm like oh yeah I'm gonna get double double of that just because it's the end of the year and it's a celebration and I'm not sure how much it costs per like per shot is probably about 20 bucks or so so um and then I got one for Benny Ludbrook who's the youngest employee of the store I said here Ben in treat yourself and so he sat down and before I got back to the table he'd already he just basically downed the double <laughs> of some of the best whiskey that he's ever drinking without and i'm like you fucking idiot <laughs> what a waste i would have bought you some shit jim beam if you're going to do that so just, that was just my... 40 bucks straight down the hatch <laughs> purchase of the week probably complained about it too I, by that stage i tuned out because i was so angry and upset <laughs> <at it. laughs> and one more rule of strava christmas version uh, rule of Strava. Gee, we're, we're starting to get better. What about the kudos thing lately? Mm. Have you been seeing heaps good runners put up the, um, end, like your year in review and it shows you your um, kudos ratio between yeah. given and received? Yeah. What we're going to all do now is go on Strava and, and give our ratio. We well, got okay. an email about it, didn't we? Where do, you, where do you, I didn't get an email. Now you go into Strava, you oh. log in, and it if says you go, see your year in sport. Yeah, so it must be like you can do it on your phone, that's for sure. Oh. Uh, 
Oh, it's only available on the mobile phone. Just open the Strava app and head to your profile. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, you would subs- everyone a subscriber? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, Brad, give us how many you, how many kudos you receive. Oh, it takes, it's a, it's, it takes a while. Yeah, it's scrolling, it's scrolling through. Oh, you got to go all the way across, right? Yeah. Is it the last oh. screen? Are you expecting this to be bad, Moose? I'm expecting this to be real bad. <laughs> yeah, because, but it's not because we're like full of ourselves. It's just because. Oh, you vain motherfuckers, both of you. No, look, I don't follow that many people, so how am I going to give that many kudos? All right, I got mine up. How many? Yeah, but you got like 5,000 followers or something. Yours would be well out. I'm giving a lot of kudos, though. Tell us yours. Oh, total kudos. Here we go. Yep. Oh, shit. No, mine's just. <laughs> Yours is out too. No, no, no. I skipped to the wrong page. Oh, you can go back. Total kudos, 144,198. Oh, that's a lot. What'd you get? 109. 109,000. What about Brad? You uh, got smashed you. I got 80, just under 84,000 and gave just under 10,000. Oh, I gave over 10,000. Yeah, so do I. What did you give me? What were you? 10,008. Oh, it was 12,997. That so, balances, though. Nah, that balances. Given, given more, received more. I win this competition for sure. What was you, How much kudos did you receive, Brady? One, 144,000. I reckon I probably got the best ratio then. 83 to no, it's 10. Not, it's not a ratio 84, competition. 84,000 to 10. Yeah, it is. Ratio competition. <laughs> ratio competition. Ratio competition. <laughs> How many followers you got though, Craigs? It's not. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. That's Chuck why it's that a ratio. Ratio that's that's why it's out. a ratio. But it doesn't. Doesn't. That's yeah. why it's a ratio thing. Another win for Trailful on this show. Uh, anything else you want to say on that segment, Moose? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. What's coming up? Only thing I've got coming up in the running world is um, I'm expecting to see some big results from Stewie down at those Christmas carnivals in Tasmania this week. No, over Christmas, he usually goes down there and bangs a few quick times on the grass. No doubt he'll be off scratch. Yeah. Actually, he might even be off minus, bloody. Might even make it more. minus. You cannot do that to someone. No. That's. <laughs> well, then the time the time doesn't make mean much either. No. Because it's like, well, what does running a mile and 12 metres actually mean? Did he win last year or did he finish se- – did he win like Devonport or did he finish second or – He usually wins there. one of them. They usually mm. – yeah, they usually look after him. They Everyone wants to see the back marker win, especially when he's the best 1,500-metre runner we've ever had. Yeah. Uh, next week's coming up and next week's going to be the yearly review, fellas. So I'll get you to start thinking about these things. The best performance of this year, most improved athlete of this year, most consistent athlete of this year, uh, the race of the year, um, and then the big one, the overall Australian distance runner of the year runner to watch in 2022 and what excites you about 2022 mm. so i uh, get thinking we will have the results from last year when you go through that next year oh good that's always good so croaks can you organize that because i think you did that last year no it's the only relevant one is the runner to watch yeah exactly true yeah how yep. about there yeah, that's fine i reckon that. good i reckon uh jay edwards was on the list runner to watch because at that point i think he just won albie thomas Albie Thomas Mile, um, yeah. So, but yeah, I'll, I'll find out uh, what we said there. But this is, I always enjoy this episode. What we might do, I might make it like a post about one of those ones, like one day throughout this week, and then the listeners can comment on it as well. Give us their two bowls worth before we record next week. I think we did that last year, didn't we? You put it all up in like a Facebook post, and people then know. just commented. Yeah, I think so. Do it after though, because yeah, it might um, influence our answers. No, nah, you guys are big boys. You're right. <laughs> you won't get influenced. I reckon it's going to be a bit more of a, a wider mix this year in terms of athletes getting mentioned. The best performance of 2021. Mm, yeah. Well, the Olympics, the Olympics are, are on. Well, so yeah. Olympic, you've got to be taken. Yeah. I, I personally think the best performance of 2021 is a pretty easy one. Oh, really? Yeah. Is it male or female? Male. Oh. Do you know what he's talking about, Moose? Uh, no. No, neither no. do I. I thought it was maybe female one at the Olympics. No. 
Yeah, so this is the thing. So much happens in the year, you forget. Mm. Tell me off air, Croaks. Uh, yeah. What's coming up in your life, Moose, between now and next week? Um, it's Christmas next week. It's after Christmas. It'll be 27th next Monday. Oh, will it? I'm actually racing that night. Hold up. Uh, my, my fill-in for next week can't do the night as well, so maybe that's going to suit him as well. If he can't do night time, you can do during the day. Night. Might have to go to the 28th or the 20... Yeah, probably the 28th, I reckon. Or during the day, maybe, yeah? Yeah. If the show comes out a day later next week, you know why. That's what happens around yep. Christmas time. So you're racing, Moose. No, not sure of the competition? Uh, nah, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm just, it's just a tempo run, mate. Just a tempo run, you know. Imagine winning your first one back. Mm, wow. It'd be a good place to start, wouldn't it? No, nah, it's... I'm I'm pretty scared to race. So it's it's going to be fun though. It's going to be exciting. Hey, what about that 5K race coming up in Bendigo in Feb? You come over and do that again? 5K frenzy. Was that in Feb last year? Was it? I think it's Feb this year. I think it was in Jan last year, but yeah. Feb this year. I might if I get fit enough. I mean, 5K is very fast. I just don't have that real any like. Yeah, I don't know. If it was a 10, I might think about it. Just go and run a few 63, 64 second 400s, Moose. That'll sort you out. Just like it sorted you out, big fella. <laughs> what are you doing, Croaks? Uh, yeah, heading to the coast tomorrow till Friday and then, um, yeah, back here for, for Christmas. That's it, listeners. Well, have a good Christmas, fellas. I'll see you guys in the new year and um, just make sure the show stays alive the next couple of weeks and we'll do it all again, 2022. All the best for the next yeah. couple of weeks, Brady. Thank you. I reckon I'll be... Um, having a baby in my arms by the time this this uh, baby goes out on Wednesday. We'll see what happens. See you, boys. We're done. See you, guys. This episode of the Inside Running Podcast is brought to you by Pillar Performance, Australia's first sports micronutrition brand. Head to pillarperformance.com.au to learn more about their formulations for joint longevity, recovery, energy, and immunity.